How are we doing? Let's we'll start with the first important thing is, uh, you guys feeling okay getting ready for the test? Any quick questions you might want to ask? Um, when I'm done with this class, I will certainly go back to my office for an hour if anybody needs some office hours. Me over, I'll find some space for us, whatever you need. Not good? No? Feeling good? And then you saw that I gave you that one sheet. I had it on the slide. That's kind of what we used to get ready, but that is available. Kind of just run you through it again with answers. All good? Quizzes should be popping open. Homework should be open. Should be able to use them over and over. If that's somehow locking up, because I think last time, right, you used them once and they were like, no, it's not. So let me know. I'll adjust the settings. We should be good. Okay? All right, we're powering on. I know this is always like, shoot. Um, but we just kind of got to keep moving. This is a lot of material in this course. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get into polymers. Okay? So, you know, I don't know if you guys kind of even have a sense what a polymer is. You might just go, well, it's plastics in general, right? We might just go, yeah, they, they're plastics, whatever. But the idea is this. It takes one of the structural, uh, like the backbone and the functional group, a small molecule, and then it just links it end to end with itself until it makes a very large molecule based on a repeating unit. So the one I have up here, what's the functionality here? Alkene, right? And then I'm saying with something, right? An alkene. Same something, by the way. If it was going to be something different, I, would, I could even be lazy and go R and R prime just to say it's something but something different. But these are just the same somethings. And then what happens is if I had one, two, three, four of them, they could make a polymer which would have that same repeating unit all the way down. The thing you'll notice though, is this an alkene? What is it now? Alkane. So the thing that lock, locked them together is it gave up one of its double bonds to make the link to the next molecule. That's not always true. And that's not always true, but this is a very predominant form of polymer. It's, call, it's, it's called a radical polymer. This is how they are. They're, I mean, again, you can imagine in organic chemistry, there's a whole study on polymer chemistry. This is a very famous form based on alkenes. We might even say down to ethylene. The kind of best based on ethylene, or I'm sorry, ethene is the word you're probably most familiar with, right? How many carbons is that? Two. So based on these two carbons, that's the heart and soul of what links together. Terminology, the individual parts, we call them monomers. So I just want a little depth, you know, just you'll learn some words out of this. So those are called monomers. When the monomers link <coughs> in the end, they make polymers. So I'll show you a lot of that. In fact, this one's easy. If it was just pure ethylene, it would end up making this thing right here. I just, the first one, it's that cheap plastic bag you can find everywhere. That's polyethylene. Literally, it's the same polymerization based on a two carbon making the polymer. So, this is kind of a cool exercise. I think it helps you understand how these monomers become polymers. I'm going to do it once. Before long, I'm going to have you guys get, get up and do this. But I'm going to show you a kind of a sneaky way to draw your monomer to figure out what polymer it would make. Okay? What I do is, I just I tilt my ethene a little bit on side, on edge. And then I just kind of imagine another bond here and then I start another one. Then I imagine another bond here and start another one. I'm just, I'm kind of just in my head doing this. Okay? It's a sneaky way to do this. Ready? 
I'll do. Oh, wow, it's fun. I step away and I see how bad my spacing is. I'm like, whoa, whoa. It's all right. I just had water for, for lunch, I promise. Just have a bad sense of direct distance. See what I did, though? Just everybody kind of get this gist? Now, with that in mind, whatever the heck's attached, and you can imagine how many things could be attached to this. This is a carbon, so how many things could be attached? Two more, right? So, you know, I could have R, I could have an RR, I could have all sorts of things to decorate on here, right? I'm just going to keep it simple, though, just put one group on, right? Now, I'm going to show you how I do it, and then it, just for your own information, it doesn't exactly act this way, but it help, it, it's just a sneaky way to figure it out how this happens. And my goal for you is this, if I show you a monomer, you could put the polymer together. That would be the goal. So what I do then is I just say, see this double? It reaches over and grabs the bottom beside it. It starts a little cascade because that's like if, if I really had all my hydrogen present. So I'm gonna I'll be official for just a minute. And I'll go, okay, great. That has a hydrogen. That has a hydrogen. How many hydrogens should this have? One. All right, that gives it four bonds. If I I'm just four bonds on carbon. If I track it with me. So if I do that, I'm just gonna put my hydrogens in. I go like this. Once I get rid of this, right, and I just bond over here, you realize, oh, that has too many bonds, because now I have five, correct? So it starts cascading down. And that's how the polymer actually happens. It starts, it starts a bond forming and then that pushes it all the way through because nothing can have five bonds so it just keeps transferring down and it makes the polymer. In reality it happens a little different. It's, it's, a, it's, an, elect, it's an electron going this way and an electron going this way. Those are called radicals. So you know, again you can imagine organic it goes to a whole nother level. But this works great for just learning how to do it. So anything I draw, if I give you the starting monomer, you could go in this sort of polymer, and you ask an important question, is this how they all act? No, but I'm going to show you a listing of things that I want you to learn and be familiar with. And you'll go, oh, this is a lot of the things I see in my everyday life. And I'll tie them to that for you guys. But then I'll show you two other types of polymers, and one of them has to do with Invisalign. We probably should do that for this class, correct? And then the other one is actually for proteins. Because that that's relevant to all of us, right? Does that make sense? And I'll just show you how they how they're formed. But this is the kind of the, the bedrock, these radical polymers. So anyway, that's kind of how you would make them. Everybody okay with that? We'll get back to this. I'll we'll practice making some if I gave you the monomers. But again, I'm going to just walk you through the steps. In fact, we'll just we'll let you invent a polymer. Hang on. I'll do a monomer. I'll just put it up here all by itself. Right now, get your functional group table out. It's great. What's your favorite functional group right now? Which one's kind of like, I kind of get from me. I like this guy. Uh, we go with a ketone. Ketone. So yeah, she's into the ketones. I like it. Ketones are good. They're they're found in a lot of things that smell good. Okay, esters even more so. Like flowers and all that, they have a lot of esters. But we'll go with the ketone. You ready? So I'm just gonna put the ketone up here and say that's what's attached. There's your ketone. Easy enough. So we're going to invent our own polymer off of your little ketone group on there. And you can imagine more than one group could be possible. Should we complicate it just for a grin? What's your favorite functional group? Uh, alkene. Alkene? Oh, that's already tied up. Might get a little confusing there. Alkene. Alkene. Okay, so we're going to just take a simple alkene. 
carbons. Tell me how many carbons. Keep it low, it'll save us a little time, but. Two. Two, okay, it's an ethane, right? So he's got a little ethane group hanging. You want it on the right or the left? Here, call. Uh, left. Left, okay. We're gonna put an ethane group on here. Is that okay? I'm just gonna put it up here like this. Here's our, we're, our brand new polymer. We're gonna make it. So all you have to do is you, you get this stuff all, you got a batch of this, it's all swirling around in the beaker. And then you put what they call an initiator in it and it starts that unpaired electron and then they just, the, the double bonds just start cascading down. And all of a sudden this thing start, this pot starts to turn to, you know, and sometimes you gotta work with it fast because it might turn solid. And you get this polymer in there and you're like, oh cool, I got a beaker full of solid I can't get out. Okay, that's cool. So sometimes what they do is, as it's made, they pour it out like they just let it, send it through a nozzle and it actually comes out as a string. It's like, oh, I got a polymeric string. Or they may lay it flat and polymerize it and then they got a polymeric sheet. This apparently was laid flat as a sheet and polymerized, right? Make sense? And they may make big sheets and some of them are meltable where you can put them together with a little heat, you can make edges and seal them and all that stuff. Does that make sense? All right, so here we go. We're gonna see what our new polymer is gonna be like. I'm gonna use Dr. T's trick. I'm just gonna turn them a little sideways. So I'm, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna end up, be, these alkenes will turn to alkanes. And we know straight chain alkanes, we're just drawing them like that, right? So how many, let's, let's do, four of these units, just to get a feel for what our new polymer looks like. Ready? So I'm gonna turn it sideways. I'm gonna just space out my four. So you guys, when you start doing your own, you have lots of flexibility. Look how sloppy I am. So you got a lot to work with. Now we're gonna decorate, all right? So we know that on every one of these, there's a that, and every one of these, there's a that. The ethyl group in the, oh, sorry. And the um, ketone group. But technically, this ketone. Oh, okay. I won't go there. Because you'll be like, do I, know, do I know how to name ketones? You're like, no, you don't. That's okay. So I won't go there. If you're dying, it's keeping you up at night. That's ethone. You just end with O-N-E when you have a ketone, so there's two carbons, so it's ethone. That's pretty cool. So I could have done that, but. See how my polymer's showing up? It's not a polymer yet, though. What are these? Yeah, I got four monomers. I had, right? But when the process starts, you know, again, it's, it's, a, it's, it's actually, one comes here, this comes out, that goes there, this comes out, but I like to just do them like this because it just makes better sense. That goes to that carbon. That go, it's, not, it's not hooked to this, it's hooked down to where the double is, right? And if I gave it a little more tilt, it might have even been prettier. There's my new polymer. I'm missing something. Looks like I forgot a, there we go. There's an amine polymer, and it has some sort of characteristic about it. Would it have any water solubility? I'm, I'm already thinking about the characteristics. Anybody? Yeah, how come? Yeah, it's got a dipole in it, so that would be attractive to water. So this, you know, if I didn't use that, like this stuff, which has none of that in it, I put water on this and you know it just pours right off, correct? But my, our new polymer might actually be water soluble. I don't know, it's interesting, huh? Okay, cool, cool polymer. Good job, guys, we just made a polymer. Does that all make sense? So part one, I know what a monomer is. Part two, I know how the polymer happens, this, is this radical polymerization. And you could actually predict what structure be formed, correct? Part three, I want to show you how to represent it, because I, I only did four units. These things go thousands. And by the way, there's another chemical, it's called Terminator. You, it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
right? It's, but you put this terminal agent reagent in there and it shuts it down, just stops it. Then it dead ends it somewhere, which would be cool, right? And you start it, the batch happening, and maybe it's coming off as a string. Then you just soak this thing with the terminator and just, it's done. Pretty cool. So polymer making 101. Pretty cool, huh? So now I'm going to show you how to represent it because I don't want to use so much ink. This is ridiculous. Imagine drawing a thousand of those. So it focuses on the repeating unit. So I just I just cut out the repeating unit. And I say, wherever that's coming in, right, it's going to repeat right here. And here's where I pick it up again. And I'm going to now just block that out and say, that's coming in like that. Leaving like that, this one has a, and this one has a double. Now I'm going to draw it down just because that makes me feel better, but it doesn't matter. Could have been drawn up the way I had it. <laughs> there is a repeating unit. See the see the notation. I kind of think about where this is coming in. This is going to join this, right? It's on its way down. I cut it at the exact same part. And then I just hang it over the, over this bracket a little bit, and that just says this thing repeats n times. And there you go. That's polymer notation. Make sense? Based on that, I could kind of infer what the monomer is, right? Based on this, I could infer what the monomer was. If I if I was just given this. I could back it out and go, okay, well, if, if you told me it was a radical polymerization, I'd go, okay, that works off a double bond. So I could infer that this, right? Wrong. This is wrong. Glad. Is that, and you were like, yeah, that was bugging me. Good. Is that better? Yeah. Whew. Good job. Anyway, based off of this, and then that's why I started drawing here, I'm like, that's impossible. That, right? Dallas, I messed up your piece. I could just go backwards and even infer what monomer made it if I know it was a radical initiated polymer. Okay, good. Start anyway. Let's make some relevance because it's like, okay, that's cool. And this is going to be true of all polymers. There's a monomer involved. Based on the mechanism, I, I don't, you, it's not always so easy, but I want you to learn this one mechanism. I'll show you two others that are very easy to do the, your poly, polyesters that are actually in your Invisalign and also the polyamides, which are part of your protein structure. I'll just show you those. They're very easy. The, the mechanism for it is very easy. But I know what a monomer is. I know how a polymer looks. And then I know how to notate it with this notation that says, hey, split out the repeating unit and, and show that. Sound good? All right. And then I'll show you a little bit about naming, but we'll learn a few of these. So here we go. Now a lot of times you get uh, trade names that are stuck with them. So stuff like Teflon, you've heard of that, nonstick, or uh, Kevlar, or Nomex, you're like, oh, I've heard of those, right? Or even in your business, like Invisalign, that's kind of like a trade name. It doesn't say anything about what the polymer is, right? So sometimes it gets stuck with that, and that doesn't always help. Um, in these ones, the initiator ones usually, and they don't, they're not true to form, but they're close. This is propene, technically, as you've learned it. Three carbons, prop, one double bond, ene. I don't need a number because no matter what side I put it on, it's the same thing. Everybody understand? If I took a structure like this, if I flip it, it would be that. It's the same thing. 
So I don't even need to put a number on it. It's propene. I have nowhere else to put the double bond. So they just, for some reason, this YL gets stuck in there a lot. So you just kind of get, a, if you overlook it, you'll go, oh, propene. When I hear prop polypropylene, I kind of go, oh, I hear a pro, you know, pro, that's three carbons, and ene, that's that radical polymerization. So you'll see that quite a few. And that's why this stuff is made out of ethylene. Right? So this is very simple. How many carbons? Two. Two. So it's it's so simple, it's literally no decorations. Right? And so when I get done, the polymer looks like, oh, it's just a big long hydrocarbon. So that's your kind of your cheapest kind of polymers. That's polyethylene. It's very inexpensive. It's unfortunately, way easy to make, and unfortunately, it's littering the earth. <laughs> right? But poly, polyethylene. Is that good? All right. So sometimes these words are the, they wouldn't make sense to you because you don't know the styrene group that makes no sense to you so that's a I'm not going to expect you to know that by just implication but if I talk, told you polypropylene I could guess that you could figure out the monomer for it the E though is your clue that it's a radical polymerization so here's one styrene they're using a shorthand that represents this group, but you know what this is. What is that function group? Aromatic? It's an aromatic. Sometimes that aromatic gets abbreviated with that, only to confuse you guys. It's like, what in the heck? It's not aromatic, it's not aryl group, right? It's, it's actually, it's not benzene. Sometimes that's called a phenyl group. Way too many words. Like, just stick to one word, please. That would just really help you. But that's okay. You know what that is. You know when you see it that way, right? That's why I tell you organic chemistry is done better with symbols because this is undisputed. Everybody knows what that is. This stuff, when you make it, you can imagine there's a ring and on and on and on. This is your coffee cup. That's your styrofoam. That's your white styrofoam coffee cup. That's what that is. Okay? Are a lot of polymers not degradable? Yes, especially when they're out of this set because the hydrocarbons, um, you know, over time we've found some bacteria that's natural that eats hydrocarbons, so we're learning some things, but they're not great. Other hydrocarbons dissolve hydrocarbons. That's why when you're in a pinch and you're like, oh my gosh, I need a little gas just to start some, you know, you don't put it in a styrofoam cup because it just eats right through it. It dissolves. Life dissolves life. Right? So here we go. Now, I'm going to show you a few. I want you to learn some of these by name. Okay? So, polyethylene, that's the bottles and trash bags. And make your own notes. That's literally the cheap white plastic bags that you're no longer are supposed to use in this state, right? That's literally that. And it's predominant. It's all over the place. Every time I pick up something that's just cheap reusable, it's a polyethylene. Okay? Polypropylene, isn't that interesting? One little extra carbon and it just made enough attractive intermolecular force. It just gets a little stronger. So that would be more like this, where it's a, it's a durable carpet fiber. Okay? That says car tires, but don't take that with a grain of salt. This that does it means it's a it's a it's an additive to car tires. I'm certainly not making car tires out of polypropylene. I'm making them out of beetle rubber that's highly fortified with other things. Here's the one. Look at that. Tetra, how many is that? Four. 
fluoro. Oh yeah, that's tetrafluoroethene. So they fluorinated every corner that would have had a hydrogen on it, made a polymer, and boop, there you go. There's your non-stick Teflon. Things don't stick to the Teflon. And that's literally that black coating you see on your frying pan that nothing seems to stick to. Not wild? So I had a couple little projects in my world that were in, kind of pertinent to this business, which is kind of, one of them was that we, they also coat a lot of satellites with Teflon. And so we made a, so they're, they're lightweight because they're plastic. The, the satellites are lightweight because they made them plastic. But what they didn't realize is the plastic in space, it does a little of this action. They didn't know this was going to happen. They just wanted to make them plastic. But it kind of it kind of gets the same effect where it, these things charge up. And what they do is then the satellite, it's really weird. It's called the reverse photoelectric effect. But basically what happens is as those satellites travel through space, what few charged particles are flying around up there, which are very few, they pick up on this satellite and it starts to charge up a little bit. Because it's plastic, it can't discharge. So every once in a while, when it hits the sunny side, it releases a big shot of electricity, and then the whole satellite goes down. It's like, oop, I just knocked out all the electronics on my million-dollar satellite. That's a bad day in space. right? So we, we made a space paint that made it discharge the electrical charge. So we painted the satellites with this paint. And the reason I'm talking to you guys about all this is because my job why they said, hey, Thompson, we need your help, was I needed to stick the paint onto this, and remember, it's a non-stick surface coating. So that was my whole problem, right? Like, everything works. The space paint works, it discharges, it's wonderful, it just doesn't stick because this is Teflon. So that was my whole job. So that's kind of fun. So we solved it, and that's good. NASA got a little paint. It's fun. Can I tell you how I solved it? Yeah. Promise not to tell anybody? <laughs> if you iron it on, like with a freaking clothes iron, it will actually melt into the polymer. What would it need? Yeah, so you just need to iron it on. How long did it take you to figure that out? Not too long. <laughs> <laughs> but then when you're getting paid a lot of money and stuff, you just talk about it differently. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to overcome the thermal barriers to create a proper adhesion of blah, 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 blah. And in my mind, I'm going, I'm ironing it on. <laughs> you can do it on your ironing board. <laughs> okay, whatever. But that's okay. That's okay. It's kind of fun. Yeah. This is so polymer business. The other polymer problem, or thing we had too, which is cool, this is not my idea. I was a technician on this job. So sometimes I work like my own stuff, and then other times I was like, hey, I'm not funded. Anybody need a hand? I know some science. I can help you. So... The guy I helped, he actually had thought of this. He was taking carbon dioxide out of the air and was turning it into ethene. So he had a catalyst that turned carbon dioxide into ethene. And so basically the idea was to get all the greenhouse gas sucked back in and then you could use ethene. And we didn't make plastic bags with it. We were going to just make fuel. Fuel creates greenhouse gas. His idea was suck the greenhouse gas back across his catalyst bed and start making fuel again. It's like, yeah, that's a good idea, right? Because then you just you just get rid of the cycle where the CO2 just builds up. You just suck it back down and turn it back into gas. Pretty, cut, pretty cool. So I got to play with that one, too, for a while. So that was fun. And my job there was just like the stuff you know. It's like what sticks to CO2? So then I was just thinking about what kind of force CO2 is... You know, and you guys, but again, the, we've learned enough in here you would be dangerous, like you could figure some of that out. But basically CO2, these are aligned such that it cancels the poles. If I look at this, it's a dipole, right? But these are in this exact opposite side, so it cancels. So in essence, it's just a dispersion force. So I was thinking about things that had a little attraction for this, but were dispersion force in nature. So they were 
beds, and then I we put the catalyst in the bed, and then as it came over it, he could do Jim's magic on it, which is cool. That was his his. Thing. This is kind of fun. So this is polymer chemistry. Did you get these with me talking and giving you all this blah blah blah, right? Did you get these three notes? You got three polymers. I'd like for you to learn. I'm going to show you two more. They're all radical polymers. You see the same trend. Remember what I just showed you, right? If I just, if I did them this fancy way, I could, right? I'd end up with just the hydrocarbon chain with the groups stuck on them. And here's two more that you might have. Just trying to give you a couple relevant ones. Okay, there's your polystyrene. That's your styrofoam cup. And a lot of times we've learned to just shoot that out of a gun and like do all the attics like this. If I pulled this down, you might look up and you know at the, on the ceiling part of this building. It's just full of styrofoam that got blown in there. Have you ever seen that? Mm -hmm. Like instead of getting vats of insulation, they just use a gun and just shoot it. And when it sticks, it makes styrofoam cup just sticks to it, <laughs> and it insulates the whole building. So that's that's what that could be used for. And then this one. Polyvinyl chloride, again, I wouldn't assume you know what a vinyl group is. There's no reason. If I was being very technical with that, anybody want to take a shot at the true name? What, how do you start this name? Yeah, so when it's attached as a group, you call it? Alkyde. Chloro, right? It's chloro, how many carbons? In the parent, e. so we call it eth e. It's, so this is chloroethene. Is it technically what the name is? So if they called it poly polychloroethene, you'd go, oh, I know what that structure is. But they use sometimes in poly again too many words. You should make rules like you got to stick to one word. You don't get to use all these words just because you're a polymer. If it's not organic, you don't get to use a new word. But well, we don't do that. But this is that white stuff, right? It's This is actually some here. There's a little bit on here. But you see it in your plastic pipes. Have you ever seen the white plastic pipes they use? So it's, it looks like this. That's polyvinyl chloride. It's a lot more strong, It'll re and it um, doesn't decay very much. So you use it for water pipes and stuff. You can run pipe through. So that's, that's some I think you, you would have relevant. Any questions? Feel all right with this? You could imagine mixing. So I just want to show you a couple. So we call, you know, the, the ones I just showed you are all called homopolymers. But you could imagine you could also do two different polymers and mix them together and maybe come up with new properties. So here they took the parts for the polyvinyl chloride and they took the parts for polydichloro, right, ethene, and then they put them together and they made this kind of, and see how they repeat, right? You end up with the double and the single and the double just alternating. That's a copolymer, but they make them and then they come out with these new products, and this was saran wrap. That's the stuff, you know, it stretches, it's clear, and then it kind of grips itself. Go figure. It's kind of crazy. So I don't know what our little invention would have made. We go make it, we polymerize it, and like, okay, what does it do? I don't know. <laughs> be, be fun to play with, right? Does that make sense? So they could be random. Just, just, just words. So you, if you ever hear about this, so you, but it just makes sense if you think about it. It could be random, which means the two parts or three parts, they're just in any kind of order. And that, that's going to have very unique properties, right? You can imagine it's very inconsistent. This is the, this is saran wrap is very organized, <coughs> alternating one and the other, one and the other. And sometimes just the energy of things coming together makes them space appropriately. And you're like, yay, because then it gets very organized. But sometimes they work in blocks. Like one monomer loves the other monomer so much, they kind of... And then the second set of monomers, they like each other so much, then when you polymerize it, it looks like blocks instead of like alternating. 
And then you can graft in from the side. The side chains you guys have, like on ours, the ketone side chain might be something we want to polymerize off of sideways. So even if your idea, your side chain of another ethene group on the side, that allows the polymer to go sideways, right? And that's what graft polymers are. So that's new properties again. Because we've already learned straight things lay down on top of each other pretty nice. Kind of raises the boiling point, correct? But if I start branching, you can imagine it would probably start lowering the boiling point and give it less density, make it kind of open up. So that's kind of some ideas for polymer chemistry. Fun stuff. And again, I, again, I'm. you don't have to do all this. I'm just showing, here's the truth of it. They draw it this way with half arrows, saying that's one electron coming from here, one electron coming from here, one going here. So again, the way I do it is easier to conceptualize for students, and it works. And I would rather, you know, if, but if you, if you care about the details, it's an, a single electron that's propagating down the whole chain. Does it? All right, we'll get to this next, but I want to practice something first. I want to make a few polymers in here, okay? And I'm going to go at it a few different ways, and then you can kind of think about it yourself, like with your group, okay? So I'm going to go, I'm going to go over to these parts of the board, and then I'll have your group just go up and just come up with some different things. I'll have you do two polymers on each board. Okay, but I'm going to go one way. I'm going to put up a monomer, and then you guys decide. And let's let's stick to four because that at least gives you the pattern. Is that okay? I'm going to give you a monomer. Put it up. I'll put it up there, and then your team, you can kind of decide what it would make based on the monomer. You can do the polymer, and then um 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 um. There it is. Sometimes it's that bad. That's glorious for me. We'll go through first time. I'll do your. Mon I'll do the monomer. You guys make the polymer four units, and then go ahead and use the shorthand notation. Get that done as well. Does that sound good? So all of these are going to be ethylene based. I'll put an alcohol on this one. That can be somebody's. This little, this little group right here. I'm going to get you four together. I'm going to put you with these. These that'll give you a group of four. Is that all right? So I'll get your little set up here. Is that all right? I need to break up the band here. I know you guys have been working together, but and let's do this. I'm going to do two different. Halogen groups on here, just for pens. That's you, that's going to be yours. You four. You guys can work on that. Again, what do I want? I want a four-unit polymer, and then the shortcut, like the polymer notation of what this thing looks like. That's what I want from you guys. Okay, you four right up front here. You can work on. Where do we have space? Well, we're going to work on either side of this. Is that okay? Well, let's start here. We can get in. Can't you get in this, maybe? Okay. And if we have to, we can this out of the way. There. I just got a board back. That'll help. Now you're not even blind. We'll do that. So we need a pen. You guys can go to work. Is that all right? Got a pen there. Maybe we'll make it darker. Got this one. Oh yeah. We'll just make some fun thing up here. And since you kind of get ready for a test, will you tell me what the functional group is? Just so we know what we're doing. So yeah, what is that functional group? And then, um, okay, we've got a group of three back here and a group of four here. Is that all right? So you guys can work on this guy over here.
this guy, there's a functional group for you. And I'll put another one down here. That on there. It's totally making stuff up. Now keep in mind, I'm making this up, so sometimes the functional groups don't play right with an, a radical initiated organization, but that doesn't matter. We're just playing right now. So. And then you guys, the, left, the leftover group before, we can work over here, and we'll make something. on that functional group too since you're there. Just say, hey, that's a something because I'm getting ready for the test and I know what that's called. Cool. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. is always a, a kind of the hard part and it's what you do is you you kind of go here's the functional groups I'm worried about and sometimes it's just another carbon I go a half bond before and then I go a half bond after and it's kind of like that represent right it's a re the repeat this is on its way up right this is on its way up. This is on its way up to the next thing, so I'm just repeating right here. It's hard to see, but what I think about is get one full bond that has both pieces of the ethene and then do a half bond back and bracket it there. Get your full ethene in, then do a half bond on that side and bracket there. And then the representation would look a little bit, you're almost there, right? See how close she is? All you have to do is just stretch that over about halfway through there. And then this one needs to come on through like that. And there you have it. Because I got the full carbon carbon with all the functionals. Right? And sorry. Mess up. There it is. That'll do it. Can I go through that just so you can see it? I got the full carbon carbon with all the groups and then it's halfway on its way out and halfway before. So it takes a minute. Concept's not wrong. Yeah. Full carbon, halfway this way, full carbon, halfway over. Right. So if we were to move it over one, like instead of being between the C L and the R, and it like was flipped, would that be the same thing? Yeah, and that, yeah, so that's good. So what you're saying is you could also have done it this way. The way you have it there, you could also have done, I think I'm, I'm hearing you right, you could also have done CLDR this way, and that also means the same thing, right? Yes, that's okay too. Main thing is, is that the, the F theme piece is captured with the functional group and then just halfway on either side of it. It's good. Functional group and alcohol, everybody agree? Looks good. Here's our four units, they all repeat. Functional group are alcohol halides, right? There's more than one right on there, so that's all good. Here's the four, this looks good. Here you could use, I like, did you guys catch Dallas's point? Like. If you caught it going there or you caught it going down, that's still fine. Either one's fine. Amine, good. And then again, see, we're, we don't quite have the either side of the functional group, right? So what I want is I want one full bond that includes that. So I can either do it here 
right? Or again, you could have done kind of our conversation, or you could have done it on the down part. <coughs> the one would work. So all that's missing is this little bit more, little more detail. Because I just need to know that that second carbon has no functionality. It's good. Ooh, this looks good. You guys agree there's a carboxylic acid? But we miss the other functional group. Who knows how to name that one? Is that on your list? File. file. That's a file. Okay, good. Be careful what you do have and don't have when I write the test, right? And then last but not least, yeah, this is good. This is an ester. Right? And it's important. The parts of the ester is it has an R group on the end, right? So there's the ester. This looks good. Yeah. Got it? It's cool, huh? A little bit of polymer practice. And you could go the other way too. I could show you um, I could show you either notation like the full polymer or I could show you the polymer notation and I ask you, hey, can you go back to the monomer? Right? What is the monomer that made this thing? Could you then turn around and go, Oh yeah, I know what it is. Shall we try that real quick? This is going to be very easy. You just got to remember, don't look at your notes, okay? You ready? Don't look at your notes. started on for a second. Just hang out. Don't start working though. Just hang out there for a minute. Thank you. And, and don't leave your partners all alone. Come up. Come, come represent. Come strong. Okay. Come on. Are you ready? just go like this and go to the next board and then answer the problem. There you go. <laughs> Generate the monomer. condensation polymers because basically one of the products is water. Okay? Now, uh, you know, there's parts of it. All I want you to understand when I hear condensation polymer is I am removing a small molecule. That kind of, it gets generically, should be water, but they just basically condense out a small molecule in some case. For you guys, the polyesters are made by removing water in the process. 
Now, you're just like, how easy is that? What is it? Yeah, sometimes it takes a catalyst to make it work like that. It doesn't just do it by itself. Like I don't just throw those two things in, in water and then it happens. Sometimes you have to facilitate it. In fact, this one says I have to add acid. That's what that means. So if I add acid to that, the reaction takes off on its own. But my point for you guys is this. What I want you to learn off of that is the, the shortcut name for it has the functional group that repeats. Now, to you, you might look at this and go, what is that? What, what is that functional group? Aromatic. Aromatic. And so that is not part of the name, but what's the other functional group? Now, look right here, and again, this is, right, this is what we're talking about. I want to go here, my eyes go here, but I'm like, wait, I see that, and then I say, is anything attached to it? And I go, this is, and then I think, and then there's an R group again. Oh, we just identified that group. That's an ester. This is a polyester. So sometimes you'll hear, hear things referred to that way. So if I gave you a structure and I say, hey, which one's the polyamide, which one's the polyester, you probably could look and just, based on functional group, and say, where's the repeating ester? And see how the ester repeats? Now you might, you know, don't get caught up in, why don't they call it polyaromatic? Don't worry about that. that I'm just telling you the realities. Because you've heard that polyester, right? Some, some of us used to wear polyester <coughs> pants, right? Or whatever. So that's literally what it is. Same material with a different flavor, different functional groups makes so the parts that are attached there make it a little different property why you're not putting pants on your teeth. Right? They're a little different material. It's clear, it's a little more rigid, right? It's obviously um, right, as opposed to you know this cloth polyester, which is a little stretchy, right? Does that make sense? So, I just wanted to show you that one. And so sometimes you'll hear them referred to as PET. You sometimes see PET plastics, that's what they're talking about, polyester. And then the, that terephthalate, that literally is this, that's a polymer word with that big functional group on it. So just, you can ignore that right there. So, but a polyester, I didn't say that on here yet. Yeah, there it is, good. That's what I'd want you to learn about. So, two parts. If you looked at this and I asked you, hey, what is the small molecule that's removed to make the polymer happen? Anybody? What am I removing? Water. And that's common in a lot of reactions. You'll see that happen a lot. You remove, remove water, you'll remove hydrogen, you remove HCl. That's just like common things that happen in polymerization. And then also that polyester is the nature of what makes those Invisalign braces that you guys might be using. Good stuff. All right, why don't you guys take a little break. I'll see you back here about 2.12 and then we have this. I'm not expecting you to like memorize exact structure or anything. I just want you to identify, oh, I see a polymer and some, you know, they're using a kind of a little different notation. It wouldn't be brackets. That's what I was showing you, right? Brackets. And if I said, hey, what's the repeating unit in here? You know, I wouldn't, if I said aromatic, that would be correct, but you could also say a polyester. That would make sense. Does that make sense? And then that is the stuff that your Invisalign's made of, just so you got it. And, and then a condensation polymer as, a, as opposed to a radical polymer. The reaction literally just pulls a small molecule out, in this case, water. Okay? And then once that happens, and I might even ask this, this is what I love to ask too, what are these original functional groups? What's that? Perfect. What's this? Alcohol. So a carboxylic acid with an acid and an alcohol in a hydrogenation, I mean, sorry, condensation reaction makes an ester, right? But the way I would ask it is, I'd say, what are the functional groups in the original monomers? And I would expect you to be able to do that. True? Okay, cool.
Okay, and again, trade names, Biolon, if anybody seen words like that, you call them the Duron, Dur uh, Biolon, these are uh, other trade names. Smart Track, Invisalign. The only difference is obviously because they're probably competing, there's probably changes in the functionality, which, you know, they're trade secrets that give it a different property. All right, here's the next one. So, before I do it, can you guys, what's the original functional groups? Carbonic acid. Okay, original function group here. Amine, and I'm making a, what is that function? <coughs> Perfect. So if I made a polymer in this manner, in other words, I have this on both sides, you could imagine it's called a polyamide, right? So there you go. What am I removing? Water again. So this is another condensation reaction in which I remove water. So there's the other product. Now, when we get to uh, amino acids, you'll see that an amino acid has an amine on one side and a carboxylic acid on the other. So when they line up like this, these are the monomers. And then if I remove water, which again, I don't just boil it off. I mean, there's got to be an enzyme in there that does that, that actually facilitates the reaction, right? It makes this polyamide, which is a protein. And this is the fundamental amino acids in your diet becoming muscle fiber. It's a polymerization in the body. It's kind of cool, huh? And again, what kind of things could I ask if I looked at this thing and I said, I gave you multiple choice and I said, you know, polyaromatic, polyamine, polyalcohol. Sometimes they call those polyols when they have poly multiple alcohols in them. Polyamide, you know, could you select what the polymer repeating piece is based on your functional group chart? And then could I also ask you, hey, what are the functional groups in the beginning? And then if you saw this reaction, could you identify what was being removed? And there you go. And then I would expect you to know, hey, this is this is the reaction that makes protein. And we'll get back to that. We'll recycle, we'll do it now and then we'll, cycle, we'll circle back before this unit's over. Cool. There you go. Now, I chose words that I think by what you know, you could pick apart the original monomer. I'm not using words like styrene or vinyl, because that's, I mean, it might be in there, but the, it's okay, because I can override that and say, okay, I can, I can get past the vinyl part because I can see the other piece. So based on that, could you, Identify where my polyethylene is. Anybody got a letter for that? A. A. Cool. Has anybody got a letter for poly? Propylene. Little ladder. D. Yeah, right. And then what about polyvinyl chloride? The vinyl, I'm like, I don't know what that means, but I know what a chloride is, right? Which one's that? B. Perfect. Simple enough. Study the monitor below. Woo. Wow. So now what I'm saying is if you want to kind of condense this down, right? I can cut it down to just this. I'm just trying to get it neater because I don't want to get caught up in redrawing all that. I'm just going to say it's a CO2, CO2 with the CH3, just to keep it simple, right? If I had this, could I build a three monomer unit? Just what we did on the board. So that would be good practice. I might leave that for you guys to do for your quiz and test review. Just you can, you can run the slides and see what you come up with. That's kind of fancy the way it's drawn. There you go, I cut out the repeating unit. I didn't put it on a tilt there, I just kept it straight. It's all right? So you get to practice that. 
I'm going to give you two other thoughts because this I think is relevant because you hear this a lot. A lot of you have water bottles. If you turn them over, you'll look on it and you'll see HDPE or you'll see LDPE. So HD high density polyethylene and then LD low density polyethylene. And the reason I'm going to get this to you guys is because, you know, I just showed you five families of ethylenes, right? Polyethylenes. I just showed you lots of them. They're all over around us, correct? So I just want you to see the difference between low density and high density, okay? Low density just simply means this. It's, it's, it's not very dense, so it doesn't pack very tightly. High density means it's pretty dense, so it packs tightly. So now I'm going to just tell you this one piece, and you can hopefully put this together. One of them's branched, one of them's not. In other words, that little thing that we were kind of messing with where it had a side chain, the graft, that branches it. Okay. Or if I put a side chain with just a lot of hydrocarbon on it, just it takes off on the side and just has a lot of hydrocarbon. That would make the polymer branch, correct? Yes. So, branch. <coughs> okay, I'll just do this. Branch. Then if I have my magic eraser, I'll type this on my neck someday. So that'll be hilarious, because then it'll do like this all day long, and my shirt will be like, what the heck? If you're an old school teacher like me, because you know I've been around a minute, right? I have grandkids, right? So that should give it away. But we used it to teach with chalk, and so then our badge, like, oh, you're a teacher, is like we had chalk all over our film, like everywhere you walk. You're like, oh yeah, you must be a teacher. Why? Because you got chalk marks on your butt. Oh, okay. I, oops. So here's the new age teacher, right? You got black marks all over your, like, from erasing life. So anyway, you can just imagine if I had some, some hydrocarbon that way, right? It was really branched or unbranched, right? That would just be like even just pure polyethylene, right? Might keep it really pure, pristine, right? Which one do you think is going to be able to pack better? I got one vote here. Anybody else? Everybody's kind of feeling better about that? Yeah. So that's high density polyethylene. That actually is kind of the structure. So maybe I was a little misleading on this, you know. These are low density polyethylenes here. So they have a little bit more branching to them. They're not because what do I see with them? And this you can read on here, but they're they're a little more if it's low density, then they're a little more flexible. They're a little less so they're not rigid, high density rigid, wimpier, right? They just have less strength, high density strong. So where's my pipe at? Where did I put it? Yeah, there we go. So you can imagine, what do you think this is? High density or low density? High. high density. And in fact, quite often with your caps, right, you have a mixture in these bottles, right? Because the cap is a little different, same polymer as this, I mean the same family. Which one's high density? Cap, which one's low density? The bottle, because it's got a little squeezy mesh to it, right? That makes sense? And that's kind of the end of that. I just wanted to... Make sense? And sometimes you might also put functionality in here, right? Uh, let's see here. Just, let's just... Oh yeah, that's a fancy word, dipole induced. That's basically dispersion. That's what we learn in class, dispersion forces, right? Dispersion is all that holds it together. You can also branch with something that's polar and that'll give it more strength, right? Because then it grabs tighter. Yes? Um, so unbranching is high density. Yes, and then more branching lowers the density. Perfect. Good stuff. Is there more to this show? Let's find out. I think we're at the end of the trail.
we are. Wow, we have time. Because now you're going, oh, 